Visitors around this area heard shots coming from the cafeteria, but instead of running away from it, some actually ran towards it. Little did they know, they were to become a new dark chapter in that history. Before Port Arthur, we had a patchwork of laws across Australia because each state and territory have had, and in fact still has, its own laws. It meant that, you, that some states uh, had banned assault weapons for civilians and some states made them easily available. With the entire block roped off, members of the homicide and forensic squads moved in to reconstruct the massacre. A lot of young Australians don't remember that there was a time when we had a mass shooting about every year. They were not generally as many people killed as in the American ones we see on the news, but there were um, mass shootings and there were, there were semi-automatics were generally freely available and there was gun trafficking in a much larger way than now. The principle was that all the states and territories should have uniform laws, which to some extent has been achieved. But the idea was to have every state and territory require registration of all guns, a ban on semi-automatic rifles and shotguns for, the, for civilians, and the requirement to prove that you had a good reason to buy a gun. Over the 25 years since Port Arthur, because we've seen a decline in gun, in gun deaths, the rate of gun deaths in Australia is about a third now what it was before Port Arthur. And that means that in state parliaments where the minor parties and sometimes very pro-gun parties have begun to get a foothold, they, the gun laws have become a sort of bargaining chip. So the major party that's in government says, if you support my uh, bill to do in some totally unrelated area, we'll agree to water down the gun laws. Do you think people are even aware that this is actually happening? No, I think that they are not uh, because it's the changes seem to be minor sometimes, you know, like just broadening of a category. It's not like anything is being thrown out wholesale, but of course, the uh, what looks might look minor on paper can be very, very significant. Madison, are you concerned that maybe we're seeing an erosion, at least on the margins, on the edges of that, perhaps creeping up the numbers of, of, uh, of guns in our society? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that seems um, most concerning is kind of that chipping away at the edges, the 28-day the, um, cooling off period not being applicable nationally, the, um, the National Firearms Register not ending up happening, um, which was one of the things that was requested after Port Arthur. Um, I think that there was a line in um, Matthew Denham's piece in The Australian Today where he described Port Arthur as an event that sort of shook Australia out of its complacency about guns. And I think that that complacency is perhaps creeping in again. Um, and it seems like it's a slow process, but I feel like a bit concerned that this isn't sort of a, a national conversation um, or sort of a, a, a thing that people seem to be concerned about. It, it just seems to be slowly being chipped away.